Hey there, Solemn Salmon here, checking out some of the recently announced changes coming to Stellaris in the future 2.2 update. Now only a couple of months ago we were reeling from the host of changes made in the 2.0 Cherry update, which threw the original version of Stellaris out the window by removing the FTL variety, and reworking borders, space control and fleet mechanics. With the accompanying Apocalypse DLC, the update overhauled warfare and the interstellar elements of the game. You're probably questioning, what's left to change? The answer to that is the economy and the planets themselves. We're still waiting till August 9th for the next dev diary, which will hopefully give us a name for the update, as well as flesh out a few specifics for the new mechanics. But from teasers dropped by Stellaris and by Wiz in particular on Twitter, we've got a few notions of what to expect. First up, the introduction of some form of market. Now, trade in Stellaris has always been an element I've given minimal attention to, but it's always been one of the most simplistic, albeit clunky, parts of a generally very complex game. From a work-in-progress screenshot shared by Wiz, it looks like the update might be bringing in a more shared galactic market, where prices change depending on who is selling what and how much they're selling. This could be interesting if it introduces elements of trade war to the game, where you could potentially topple an enemy's economy by dumping large amounts of a resource into the market. It also raises questions as to the continued role of trader enclaves in the game, especially given their ability to sell certain resources to empires for a price. Perhaps this new market will function through them. Other things to pick out here, a few new resources on the second row. Make note of the pink and blue ore on the left there, because it will appear again in another screenshot in just a moment. Finally, and a little obscured by the edges of the screenshot, right down at the bottom here, we see half of the words slave market. Haven't seen anything about it so far, but perhaps this forms a way to purchase pops enslaved in another empire, which might play into the planet changes we're going to discuss in a moment. Before we get into probably the biggest reveal for 2.2 so far, the planetary changes, I just quickly want to point out a few things from this ship design screenshot. You can clearly see some of the new resources across the top of the screen, confirming the expansion from the existing trio. More interestingly, it looks like ships will now require these resources to be built, rather than just minerals. This corvette, for example, has a cost of 140 of the pink-blue ore from the market, plus 10 of what at first glance looks like Teldar crystals. However, given that strategic resources have themselves only been recently updated, perhaps this is just a new resource using existing graphics. Okay, on to the big one. We were teased with this screenshot of a Corazontesque Earth, a world covered by a vast metropolis, with a population of 102, over four times the previous maximum on a 25 tile planet. How could just a thing exist? Simple, with the removal of the planetary tile system completely. There's a hell of a lot to unpack from the new planetary screen. The resource production section clearly shows the production of a number of the new resources, as well as the requirement for some of them as an upkeep. In the top right, we see a deposits tab, most likely for strategic resources such as Batharian stone and alien pets, with the decision tab just below. The real meat shows that the old tile system has been replaced with districts, which appear to come in levels and at first glance seem to be divided into an administrative district, perhaps governing the overall size and efficiency of the planet, industrial for resource production, agricultural for food production, and financial for energy production. It's all very endless space, and these wouldn't include any science-based districts though, it could be that my initial guesstimates are coloured by the existing build, perhaps they'll be very different. Buildings now appear to have planetary-wide effects, and it looks like you're limited with regards to how many you can build. My guess would be a system similar to Europe Universalis 4, where the number increases with the size and development of the planet. In another screenshot, we can see the population tab for this Earth. Pops now have jobs, and their resource output and upkeep are determined by the roles they'll play in this planet's society. How these jobs are generated remains to be seen, but I guess it's governed by the buildings and districts, as it seems very much like the pop job system from some recent civilization games. An interesting aspect, though, will be how different empires require different jobs from their pops. Robotic pops, for example, will have a very different planetary society than their fleshy organic counterparts. Whilst Wizards said on Twitter that Xeno Hives will again have a different structure. All in all, a very interesting update is on its way. As I said, we'll have to wait till August 9th for the return of feature dev diaries and some more concrete information. First impressions though, the planetary tile system has always been a bit abstract. 
So hopefully this new system will feel more organic. Hopefully it won't overcomplicate an already complex game. Let me know what you think in the comments, like and subscribe for more. Until next time.